Hello everyone, my name is Pacha Kamak and welcome back to another episode of Waha Jamila, our African Desert Zoo. And welcome back also to the second part of our two-part yeah, final uh, exhibit build basically, our biggest and also our last exhibit habitat in the zoo, the big savannah that we started already in last week's video so if you haven't checked that out or if you have watched that i highly recommend doing it. it was a really cool build and it looks really amazing i have to say so myself so i highly recommend yeah watching this before you go into this one and this habitat is yeah as i said the last one after we after that we will finish up the whole zoo and then it will be uh, of course be uploaded to the workshop so you can download it yourself but this habitat focuses on three different antelope species these being the Gamsbox, the Springbok, and the Blue Wildebeest. Yeah, not the black one, the Blue Wildebeest. So, and in today's episode, we are gonna build uh, all the backstage stuff that you need for these animals. So we build the outdoor cage, outdoor backstage cages, we build the indoor backstage cages, the rooms for, uh, for preparing food, and of course, um, the rooms where the keepers can just stay yeah, relax and have a good time. All that kind of stuff we will do in this episode today. And as you can already see from the length of the video, it is quite a long one because yeah, it is quite a big build that will be there in the end of this video. But before we go into all of that and before I talk a bit about uh, yeah, how backstages work and stuff you might consider when building a backstage, I have to make an announcement that there will not be any videos in the next two to three weeks. Most likely, definitely not in the next two weeks. Three weeks, I don't know yet, uh, but we get to that. And that is because I'm going on holiday and I'm gonna travel to Vienna in Austria, the capital of Austria. And since I can't release a video when I'm in a different country, uh, there will not be a video next week. And since I also not be able to record any videos when I'm in a different country, there will of course be also not a uh, video after that when I'm back from that. And after in the week after that, I don't know if I still take a week uh, of free time to yeah really come back and really get to yeah acclimate again to my country uh, because we are not, will be really hot it will be will be really hot in that time of the year. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe next two three weeks there will not be video, but definitely next two weeks there will be none. And I also don't have the time to prepare videos in advance and then upload them or let them upload by someone else uh, because I also have university to do at the same time still in the middle of my exams basically. So this means you sadly have to live with two weeks without a video. I'm super sorry about that. But hey, I'm going also to Vienna Zoo on a side note and I will bring back hopefully a ton of new inspiration ideas for future builds. So yeah. Uh, look forward to that and I will also of course share um, your impressions and pictures of my trip to Vienna on my social media pages so on Instagram possibly and on Twitter so <clears throat> if you have, don't follow me there maybe consider doing so. But back to the build we are actually at the moment building the outside cages or the backstage outside cages whatever you want to call it there are, I think different names I don't know if there's an official name for this. Um, the behind the scene cages basically where we can keep the animals outside but not in the main yard for example if you want to separate certain animal groups from another if you want to separate certain members of a of a yeah, animal group of a herd from each other then this is a possibility to still give them some fresh air and all that uh, outside stuff that you need basically and sun of course while still having them separated and uh, if you are also interested in building backstages and you haven't you aren't really sure how to do them. I highly recommend as always to look at real life examples. For example, this build uh, was greatly inspired by, again, longtime members of my channel already know this, uh, Leipzig Zoo, one of my favorite zoos, the zoo I think I'm mo most about. And this is inspired or modeled after taking inspiration from their African hoofstock, hoofstock yard and of course the African area which is, if you are a little bit familiar with the layout of Leipzig Zoo, which is right behind the big giraffe house and especially the outside stalls and the yeah, um, layout of the inside uh, stables is modeled after theirs. But of course they have a ton 
a lot, a lot more um, hoof stock in their exhibit than just three different species. But still, theirs also don't only have like these three yards that we are building here uh, right now. So we will have three separate yards, and one of these yards you can also separate in two. You can see this blue line there in the middle. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, welcome, first of all, happy to have you here. And if you're wondering what these blue plaster outlines are, um, usually before I start recording, I yeah, draw a rough concept of what I want to build with plaster, because plaster is, has a lot of different shapes and forms and, and sizes. So this e is really cool to, uh, or really easy to work with. And second, of course, it's recolorable, so I can make different color regions to know what is what. So this blue outline here is all the outside stables and all everything that is red will be the inside area in the house and the actual in the yeah, actual indoor area. And then I know when I'm recording, okay, where I want to play stuff. And I don't know if people are interested to see me already uh, figuring these things out. Would of course make the video so much much longer. Um, if I if you all, I also record my uh, thinking process of um, where I want to have stuff like, like that, but if you're interested in that, of course, uh, let me know in the comments and I can maybe also record that or give snippets of that uh, in the next video that will focus on backstages or will focus on a bigger build because I usually tend to do that with bigger builds than uh, the smaller ones. But yeah, it is usually just to for me to visualize where I want to have, want to put stuff. And also, of course, it's always subject to change, as you see here. Originally, I planned to have it, to have doors. So when there is no plaster, it means that it's an opening, so a door, most likely. I had originally planned to have doors on both sides in, in this cage, but then I decided to go just with one and uh, yeah, have the rest a cl enclosed space. But yeah, the general layout of this is, as you probably already saw uh, in this video, is we have three, we have these three main cages, these three main stables, basically. Uh, in between, we have keeper pathway, so to say, and then we have this big outside yeah, runway, walkway, basically, that uh, is connected to the actual habitat and also, of course, to all the cages and keeper paths, um, which then lets us, yeah, bring the animals out and then un into the actual habitat, but also it serves as an ex as an extra stable or um, cage basically, because we can also of course close the outside area door um, with, a, with a big gate and close all the doors to the uh, smaller stables and then have this as an extra stable basically, um, where we can keep animals. And the key here really is separation. Usually, most likely think, okay, yeah, but with herd, herding animals like antelopes are, uh, do you want to really separate them? Isn't that really counterproductive because they are usually, uh, yeah, they used to be in a herd, they, us they used to be in a big group, in a big family, and uh, separation could not be beneficial, basically, uh, for their mental health. By the way, we are now starting on the walls, which took a little bit of, of, of problems. I will continue the topic in a moment, yeah, because everything on this build is not on the grid, or not on the grid, on the world, on the world axis, basically. So it's all shifted a little bit to uh, one side. So uh, every wall I had to place by hand and manually, uh, yeah, rotate and. Um, fit in by hand because they are all they are not aligned really they are all a little bit uh, sh tilted and this is was a problem and took a long of time a lot of time uh, hence why also this video is a bit longer but yeah back to the topic to separation of animals and if that isn't really counterproductive to their health to their social um, bonding stuff like that and on one hand yes it is of course you don't want to separate herding herd animals or animals that live in big family groups also applies of course to predators you want to don't se want to separate them for too long otherwise of course you risk um that the rest of the group will not accept them anymore and will outcast them but in certain instances especially in a, in a um, zoo setting in a controlled setting you sometimes have to separate animals and you will also see that in the indoor stables um, that we are building now we have basically a row of three stables uh, each behind the next one uh, and the last one of course is connected to the outside but there are three stables and we can all separate them individually make them into bigger stables if we open the doors but also have three smaller separated stables where we can separate the animals um, of course one stable group for each of the three animals basically so nine stables in total and the reason why you want to separate animals sometimes is uh, for one, of course, health re uh, reasons. An animal could be sick, 
and you don't want to risk that it infects the other animals in the group because if it's an, an social animal they are tend to stick closely together and so uh, increasing the risk of infecting each other um, or, or sometimes when uh, one of the animals one of the females has offspring when they have a baby and usually what you do in a real life zoo setting is separate the mother f um, with the baby for a certain amount of time from the rest of the group so that the baby, the offspring, uh, has some time to yeah, get into this world, to acclimate, um, to form a bond with their mother and especially with some species like zebras. Zebras are uh, assholes. I think oh, I can say this here on YouTube, but zebras are mean. <laughs> and even if they're in their own group, they can be really mean animals. Um, and so it is always best to yeah, separate the mother with their um, calf, with their um, litter, or with, with their baby basically uh, for a short amount of time from the rest so they can acclimate themselves they can, uh, yeah, the baby can get to know, can get to get used to this world, to also to the keepers, so that it knows that the keeper means no danger, stuff like that. And so you want to have an opportunity or you have an option to separate these animals in sickness, in case of aggressions even, if some animals don't get along or uh, have, yeah, if they are two males and they constantly fight over the females, you want to also separate them. Um, until you can maybe get a solution to what to do with the uh, extra male or females also. Some females can also be really aggressive towards each other. So you want to have an option to separate them basically. Um, and this is why you have usually have multiple cages, even if you have a lower number of animals, like only three or five, you want to have enough stables to at least separate one or two from the rest of the group for a longer amount of time. Of course, this applies also to males when it's not breeding season because uh, zoos don't breed their animals all the time. They have certain regulations they have to follow when they are allowed to breed them. And yeah, this of course uh, is controlled by the International Society of Zoos, the EAZA, so the European Association of Zoos, or the AZA, the, uh, uni the Globally Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Um, they say, okay, you can breed these animals, you are not allowed to breed these animals, all that kind of stuff. So you also want to have an opportunity to separate the males from the females, especially when it is yeah, breeding season uh, and the males get all hot and, fr hot and frisky and want to yeah, just uh, yeah, spread their genes, so to say. Uh, you want to have an option to you get, have to separate it somewhere. And this also can mean that you only leave, let the females onto the... Uh, public uh, exhibit onto the uh, public yards and leave the males behind the scenes in the ba in the backstage for uh, the duration of that time, which can of course be sometimes weeks. But um, you always want to make sure if you have separated animals in your backstage areas that they can still somewhat see or uh, or at least hear um, the other members of their group, so that they know that they are there. The same case applies to if you have newborns in your group that you um, yeah, want to make sure that the rest of the family, the rest of the herd can see or smell the newborn, but they can't reach it. They can't reach it and potentially harm it, but they can see it. They can see, okay, there is something new there. There is a new member in the herd. Uh, and then slowly over time, you can start to integrate uh, the, yeah, the, the mother with the newborn back to the rest of the herd by yeah, giving them more ex more and more access to the baby and it's always a risky point when you finally let all groups come together again uh, but uh, if it's done right and if separation process is done right it's usually uh, yeah it works out basically so this is a little bit yeah much might consider um, when you building backstage why we are now building as I said the indoor backstages with these three cages behind each other which is as I said, taken from Leipzig Zoo from their uh, African hoofstock yard where they have, I think, even more cages uh, stacked behind each other so that you can, yeah, uh, really sh uh, pick and choose which cages you want to open to each other, which you want to separate, and you can close the doors between each other, these sliding doors, um, so that you can separate them when an animal is in one cage and the rest is in the other, you can separate them really easily. And as I said, this things you want to consider here are of course how many animals you have 
um, what social groups they live in if they are solitary then of course you would need separate cages to keep them solitary and you don't want to ha always have them in the exhibit at the same time because that can cause aggression if they don't get along that well and if you have a group you want to have at least three cages uh, if you only have two animals in a social group which isn't really a social group it's a pairing but uh, then of course two cages are more than enough but it, uh, as soon as it goes over three four five six and seven um, you want to have at least three cages if it's really a big group you want to maybe also consider having four or five cages um, so that you can really sh pick and choose and rotate the animals between the cages between the outside yards between the public yards which is of course what the guests see and you can really control the social dynamics basically between these animals and make sure that ev not yeah that no um yeah aggressions occur between these animals you also of course want to consider outside yards um i know it's something you can tend to ignore because uh, it's really a lot of work it takes a lot of space which is usually also not usable due to the hitbox in Planet Zoo but these backstage outdoor yards as I said are important thing to consider when you have when you want to separate animals of course not all zoos have them and not for all zoos they are mandatory um, but it never hurts to have one just in case for smaller animals of course usually that's not the case you can just keep one animal inside for the duration of the time or you can combine outside an indoor yard that you have yeah and roofed over part of uh, the indoor area with mesh or with glass which essentially lets in uh, air and sun and stuff like that uh, but still acts as an indoor building uh, so it's a mix between these two but it's always it's never wrong to if you have the space and the, and the capabilities and the time to or even the patients to do that it always is a good thing to have these in backstage areas and i think caesar create also uh, really focuses on them um so if you want to have even more inspiration uh i can also recommend of course who doesn't know caesar create and i also did one uh, or a very detailed outdoor backstage outdoor yard for my south american area for my south american big backstage so you want to have more inspiration on how to do outdoor yards and stuff like that uh, i highly, highly recommend also watching this video which is really cool it was what is one of my, still one of my best works and i'm really proud of it so yeah give it a watch if you want to but yeah um back to the actual build after a lot of uh, tips and tricks basically a uh, hidden tips and tricks video here about um backstages and what you might consider when building them um we are back of course to the roof and uh, originally i had a uh, plan for a different roof design here more of a tilted roof design uh, similar to the one I did in Raven Creek for the Wiesent, for the European Wiesent or European Bison um, but then in the end it didn't really work out and I was also a little bit uh, yeah, fed up with that everything is tilted in this build because it's not built on the world axis I don't know how I messed that up but hey it happens sometimes and then, then I was like okay now I have to build a roof uh, uh, I have no motivation to do that so I decided to go with the more yeah, classical backstage roof which is flat or at least somewhat flat uh, put some gravel on there and then I'll have all the um, yeah, air conditioning units stuff like that which I'm still not an expert in so don't take my design here as something that is realistic or something like that I'm just putting stuff from the air conditioning where I think it could make sense I have no idea. I have no um, degree in engine. Uh, I have no engineer's uh, degree. Uh, I have no idea in house building degree. In um, yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, if someone has any tips on how to or any websites that explain how air conditioning works and how it it should be set up, let me know in the comments or in the Discord or on any other social media uh, website I'm currently on. You can think. You can find all the links of course down in the description um, because I always love to learn something new and to yeah, improve my building skills. But anyway, I decided to go for a flat roof here basically and we here on the part where we have the keeper area, uh, the keeper shop, keeper store, no, keeper hut, <laughs> that is the word, and the restrooms or the break rooms, um, I decided to go with a little bit of a yeah, 
fake facade, fake building on top. We will uh, use some of the domes that the amazing Gecko created here to, from the distance, create the illusion that there would be bigger buildings, like a city building in the background uh, that really serves no purpose, uh, no functional purpose instead, just for the looks of it when you're uh, sitting on the observation deck. Uh, that you, when you look to the backstage, you don't see just a flat roof. I mean, you still see it somewhat, as you can see here, um, but you also see the domes and kind of think, okay, there are bigger buildings behind there, stuff like that, um, just for the look, basically. And we will also hide the front of the backstage building that is visible from the guest's uh, guest path, basically. We will hide that with some faux uh, mud walls here, faux rock walls, um, to yeah, hide a little bit more. Hiding backstage is of course not mandatory, um, it sometimes can also serve a real cool purpose if they are really well designed, uh, have a lot of theming to them, you can really do a lot with backstage and you don't always need to hide them. Um, but since this is a more yeah, functional, practical backstage over here, uh, there's not a lot of theming to it, um, outside of the normal desert theme that I have going on here, I try to hide it a little bit, but not too much so you know as the guests that there is a backstage. You can also see it through the gate, gate but you can't of course get closer to it, so you it's left up to your imagination what's behind there basically. But yeah, um, I think that is it for now it, everything I wanted to talk about with you guys this episode, so we will now in the rest of this speed build of course plant this rock wall over here and then we focus on all the yeah, indoor decoration stuff with tools, boxes, crates, um, barrels, stuff like that. And so the usual thing you do when building the backstage, using a lot of stuff from the conservation pack, which was really amazing in that regard. And I would leave you now with a bit of music from the, of course, amazing creators of Planet Zoo. And then see you after the speed build in our real time part where we look at the finished build in its totality. So until then, I wish you a great time. Thank you for listening so far and I'll see you at the end of the video. Alright, and here we are now in the real time part and let's do this quick because this video is already long enough and there's actually not that much to show because yeah, while it takes time to build, it is actually not that much 
stuff there. It's just a backstage basically. And we are here in front of the Warthog exhibit basically. And we, had a, we have made this little plaza off camera. You didn't saw it in the video where I just threw in some rubbish collectors or whatever they're called and some Jeeps. Like they are, this is a place where you can store stuff that you need in the rest of the zoo. But we are here to focus on the backstage itself. And of course we have our entrance gate to the main savanna from the last video. And then we have our three separation cages, which actually can be combined, like these ones can be combined to one larger one, and this can divide it into two smaller ones. So we actually have four cages here. And yeah, just threw in these animals because they can't slightly enter these areas, even if I open the doors, the hitbox don't allow it. But I threw them in so that you can imagine how it would be if there would be animals inside here, which of course is a temporary solution so don't mind that they are a little bit smaller it is meant to control the animals in a smaller space and not give them yeah, enough room to run, run around and make yeah, handling them much harder but let's continue uh, to the main entrance over here and I'm on the roof my goodness I at some point have to make a video about every time I was on the roof but anyway we are now in the inside area of, of course, you have your keeper hut and you have your, um, yeah, relaxing room, I will call it now. And then you have the three pairs of three cages, so nine cages in total, which you can, of course, open and close as you, as you want to. So you have either three separate cages or you have one large one that is divided, of course, by some walls. But in general, it's one large open cage for the whole group of animals. Or you, as, is, as I explained in this people already, you separate them into smaller areas to uh, separate the animals basically and to keep certain members of the, of the herd uh, separated from each other. If I say separate one more time, I'm going crazy. But anyway, that is basically already it for this build. And also this means this was the large, the last large major build in Waha Jamila. We will have two more episodes one will be focusing on doing all the backstages. I asked you guys in the last episode or two episodes ago, I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing that and you replied yeah, multiple times that you would be interested in that. So we will do one episode where we go over all the other backstages that I still need to do. Not every animal gets a backstage because for some the yeah, backstage building basically doesn't work due to terrain constraints and space. But some animals I still need to do because I neglected them back then. Uh, and you basically ignored the backstage, so we have to do that. And then in the final episode, we will do a tour of the whole zoo and look at everything we've, we've done, we've built in yeah, almost one and a half years now, of course with a major break in the middle, but we look at everything. And when that video, when this tour goes out at the same time, of course, Wild Jamila will also be available on the workshop for you guys to explore yourself and to expand. So I will leave an area open for you to continue this zoo if you so wish so. And yeah, so two more episodes. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this one and that I see you in the next video in two to three weeks. As I said, I'm on holiday, so two to three weeks, no videos. But then, until then, and I wish you a great time, stay safe and bye bye everyone.